In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, today we celebrate the fourth Sunday of Lent. It's actually Saturday for me, late, almost, almost midnight for me, of Saturday fourth. But we celebrate the fourth Sunday of Lent. I'm doing this kind of late so that you can find it tomorrow, God willing, I'll be able to upload it so that tomorrow morning you can watch this celebration of the Mass as we celebrate this fourth Sunday of Lent. And so brothers and sisters, as you join me from your home or from wherever you may be, we gather to, to pray as we do at Mass, to give thanks to God for God's blessings in our life. And at times it's more difficult, at times it's more difficult to see the blessings of God when we're anxious, when we are going through these times of distress as this disease is ramping up in some parts of the world. But we ask for God's light. We ask that we may see with the eyes of faith the mercy, the love of God in our life. And so perhaps for those times when we have failed to see like God sees, when we have seen with eyes of selfishness perhaps, with eyes that fail to recognize those who are lowly in the world, but who are prized in God's eyes, those who are weak, those who are just not counted in the world. When we have failed to see them, we ask for God's mercy. You came to call sinners, Lord, have mercy. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to eternal life. Let us pray. O oh God, who through your word Reconcile the human race to yourself in a wonderful way. Grant, we pray, that with prompt devotion and eager faith, the Christian people may hasten toward the solemn celebrations to come. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us now hear the Word of God, a reading from the first book of Samuel. The Lord said to Samuel, Fill your horn with oil and be on your way. I am sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem, for I have chosen my king from among his sons. As Jesse and his sons came to the sacrifice, Samuel looked at Eliab and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed is here before him. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not judge from his appearance or from his lofty stature, because I have rejected him. Not as man sees, does God see, because man sees the appearance. But the Lord looks into the heart. In the same way, Jesse presented seven sons before Samuel. But Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen any one of these. Then Samuel asked Jesse, 
Are these all the sums you have? And Jesse replied, There is still the youngest who is tending the sheep. Samuel said to Jesse, Send for him. We will not begin the sacrificial banquet until he arrives here. Jesse sent and had the young man brought to them. He was ruddy, a youth handsome to behold and making a splendid appearance. The Lord said, There, anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel, with the horn of oil in hand, anointed David in the presence of his brothers. And from that day on, the Spirit of the Lord rushed upon David. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In verdant pastures he gives me repose. Beside restful waters he leads me. He refreshes my soul. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. He guides me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil. For you are at my side, with your rod and your staff, that give me courage. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. You spread the table before me, in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light, for light produces every kind of goodness and righteousness and truth. Try to learn what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the fruitless works of darkness, rather expose them for it is shameful even to mention the things done by them in secret. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible, for everything that becomes visible is light. Therefore it says, Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. The Word of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. I am the light of the world, says the Lord. Whoever follows me will have the light of life. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. As Jesus passed by, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither he nor his parents sinned. It is so that the works of God might be made visible through him. 
We have to do the works of the one who sent me while it is day. Night is coming, when no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he has said this, he spat on the ground and made clay with the saliva and smeared the clay on his eyes and said to him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam, which means scent. So he went and washed and came back, able to see. His neighbors and those who had seen him earlier as a beggar said, Isn't this the one who used to sit and beg? Some said, It is. But others said, No, he just looks like him. He said, I am. So they said to him, How were your eyes opened? He replied, The man called Jesus made clay and anointed my eyes and told me, Go to Siloam and wash. So I went there and washed and was able to see. And they said to him, Where is he? He said, I don't know. They brought the one who was once blind to the Pharisees. Now Jesus had made clay and opened his eyes on a Sabbath. So then the Pharisees also asked him how he was able to see. He said to them, He put clay on my eyes, and I washed, and now I can see. So some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God, because he does not keep the Sabbath. But others said, how can a sinful man do such signs? And there was a division among them. So they said to the blind man again, What do you have to say about him, since he opened your eyes? He said, He is a prophet. Now the Jews did not believe that he had been blind and gained his sight until they summoned the parents of the one who had gained his sight. They asked them, Is this your son, who you say was born blind? How does he now see? His parents answered and said, We know that this is our son, and that he was born blind. We do not know how he sees now, nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him, he is of age, he can speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jews, for the Jews had already agreed that if anyone acknowledged him as the Christ, he would be expelled from the synagogue. For this reason his parents said, He is of age, question him. So a second time, they called the man who had, been, who had been blind and said to him, Give God the praise. We know that this man is a sinner. He replied, If he is a sinner, I do not know. One thing I do know is that I was blind, and now I see. So they said to him, What did he do to you? How? Did he open your eyes? He answered, I told you already, and you did not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you want to become his disciples too? They ridiculed him and said, You are that man's disciple. We are the disciples of Moses. We know that God spoke to Moses. But we do not know where this one is from. The man answered and said to them, This is what is so amazing, that you do not know where he is from. Yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but if one is devout and does his will, he listens to him. 
It is unheard of that anyone ever opened the eyes of a person born blind. If this man were not from God, he would not be able to do anything. They answered and said, said to him, You were born totally in sin, and are you trying to teach us? Then they threw him out. When Jesus heard that they had thrown him out, he found him and said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered and said, Who is he, sir, that I may believe in him? Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and the one speaking with you is he. He said, I do believe, Lord, and he worshipped him. Then Jesus said, I came into this world for judgment, so that those who do not see might see, and those who do see might become blind. Some of the Pharisees who were with him heard this and said to him, Surely we are not also blind, are we? And Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would have no sin. But now you are saying we see, so your sin remains. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, you might be reading stories, news stories of what is going on around us in Europe. I was doing that earlier today. I was reading news stories about what is going on in Italy. Stories of nurses, doctors, giving their life in service for those who are sick. And I was filled with sadness. I felt sad. And when that happens, when we are sad, when we are overwhelmed, especially as all of this is developing, we can question, we can ask. One of those difficult questions in life, why? What is the meaning of all of this? And for us Christians, that question of meaning, we find the answer in, in Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ crucified. As you can see, we have the, the cross, Jesus Christ crucified. In him, we find answer for everything in life. Now, how we come to that answer, how we come to peace in our hearts from the darkness of doubt that leads to despair, how we come from that to the light of peace, the light of trust, the light of hope, how do we come to that light? Well, that's the theme of today's readings. We just heard people ask Jesus that same question of meaning. Why was the man born blind? Why? You know, if we go back to the book of Deuteronomy in the Old Testament, in chapter 28, there's a whole series of consequences for turning away from God. And one of these is blindness. And so the disciples, knowing well this part of the Bible, they ask Jesus, Rabbi, or teacher, who sinned, this man or his parents? Who sinned? that this man was born blind. They were looking for an answer in sin, because 
that was the theology of the book of Deuteronomy, that calamities in life, misfortunes, they all can be traced to sinfulness. And yet, that's not what Jesus says. Jesus says, it is so that the glory of God might be visible through him. But before I get there, let me share about another blind man, one who was not blind from birth, but which perhaps is more difficult, one who was born with sight and became blind, slowly but more and more and more until he is at this point almost totally blind. I have met actually a, a couple of, of these men, they're all men, the ones I know, who have an illness called retinitis pigmentosa. It's a degenerative disease of the eyes. People born with normal eyesight and slowly they go totally blind. And I know especially one of these men is a priest, an Augustinian priest, Father Jim Thompson, and he was born with sight, but with this retinitis pigmentosa, slowly lost his sight. He sees now only shadows. Some shadows are lighter than other shadows, but he sees very little. He depends on others for going to the hospital to listen to confessions and anoint the sick, for example. is amazing what he does still with this disability. He extends his hand when he's going to anoint someone and he asks the patient, can you guide my hand to your forehead so that I can anoint you? That's what Father Jim Thompson does. Although he cannot see, he still exercises the ministry of his priesthood. But as you can imagine, when he started going blind, it was something very difficult for him. He even became depressed for some time. But now he's one of the most joyful people I know. Even though he's more blind now than when he was undergoing this depression, God has really given him this gift of joy. He's one of the most joyful people, truly, that I have met. And even though he is blind, he is actually quite perceptive. He can see in other ways that most people cannot. And that's what we hear in today's first reading. When God sent Samuel to anoint the next king of Israel, Samuel thinks to himself that Eliab, who was the oldest, strongest, tallest son of Jesse, would be king. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not judge from his appearance or from his lofty stature, because I have rejected him. Not as Humans does God see, because human beings see the appearance, but the Lord looks into the heart. So, not even Samuel, at that point, could see like God. Admittedly, it was not easy, you know, because a king during those times 
was supposed to lead the troops in battle. So it made sense that if God told Samuel, go into the home of Jesse and I will show you who is the king or the next king who is to be anointed as king. Well, it makes sense that Samuel seeing who is the more fit, physically fit, who is the strongest man, well, that one would be the one to lead the troops in battle. But that's not what happens. As we heard in our first reading, Jesse presents the oldest and then seven other sons all were presented before Samuel and to none of them the Lord revealed to Samuel that they were the one. So Samuel is a bit surprised perhaps and concerned and he says, don't you have other sons? Is there another son? Ah, yes. He's still tending the sheep. So Samuel says, well, send for him. And so there comes David. And surely that's the one that God chose to become the next king of Israel. And God chooses David not because he was the strongest. God had special reasons why, and you can read the rest of 1 Samuel to find out. But only God could see the heart of David. No one else could. And that's something that happens throughout history, how God chooses certain people, certain key people in the history of salvation that to the eyes of the world they were unseen or unimportant. Perhaps the greatest example is Our Lady, the Blessed Virgin Mary. In the Song of Praise that we can find in the Gospel of Luke, that we call the Magnificat. She says, my soul praises the Lord, my soul rejoices in God, my Savior, because he has seen me, his lowly handmaid. He has noticed me. She was a common young woman, nothing special, in her status, her family, her appearance, achievement. She was just a normal, common person in the eyes of the world. But in the eyes of God, God delighted in her. God could see into her heart full of grace. And so it happens with David. God could see into that heart. God saw the heart of David and saw he is the one to be king. So we see God calls the unlikely people. God calls not according to our human ways, not to what we, what we may think as the most practical at times. We're only seeing the surface, the appearance. God can see much more deeply. God can see into the heart. So, so perhaps we can ask the Lord to help us, to help us see more deeply, help us see and appreciate, appreciate each other, not on what's superficial, not on what, it, what is on the appearance, but what is truly in the heart, what truly matters. People, so easily, we can all kind of fall for 
who has more achievements, more success in the world, but you know, at the end of the day, what matters is the kind of life we have lived, the kind of virtues that we have exhibited. That's what we remember the saints by. We remember the saints by the virtues, the example they left us in how they loved God and how they loved their neighbor. Qualities of the heart. During these difficult times of these illness, these disease going around, it's kind of difficult when we hear how some people, how the worst of them is, is uh, exhibited. And I won't repeat those stories because I'm sure you've heard those, plenty of them out there. But it's good to, to see, to focus on, on the good things going on around us. That's what I came across today. I was just reading earlier today from Time Magazine website that the American organization and religious group called Samaritan Purse, they sent a field hospital, 68 beds, including eight intensive care beds, 20 tons of medical equipment, and 32 specialists. And they sent this to the Cremona province in northern Lombardy in Italy. I read that China has been sending aid to European countries, promoting what they have learned as well. 18 tons of medical supplies they landed earlier today in in Greece, in Athens, Greece. So good stuff going on. Wonderful things, how various countries are working together, being a neighbor to each other, a good neighbor to one another. And for us who are Christians, for us who proclaim Christ, that's our life. We are commissioned from the time of our baptism to die to sin, to die to the eyes of this world and to grow into the likeness of Christ, to see with the eyes of God. So when we live in God's ways, we, we glorify God. God is glorified through us. How that happens, you know, it's a, it's a journey. How that happens is the more we are incorporated into this mystery of of Christ who died for us, who gave his life for us so that we can live with him and may his light be given, proclaimed, shining through us. In the gospel we heard, going back to that, the man who was born blind, Jesus answers the question of why, you know, we were beginning this homily with that question, why? Why do bad things happen? And Jesus says, the glory of God will be made visible in him. And he heals this man, which is amazing, but the story does not end there. The story continues with this man thinking Jesus is a prophet and saying this with the Pharisees who could not accept Christ because their limited understanding of the Sabbath. The Sabbath was this time for God, and God who came in Christ was showing what time is for, time for healing, time for seeing what God wants us to see and how God wants us to see but the Pharisees were stuck in their ways, small ways, blind ways of misunderstanding the Sabbath. And this blind man says, I was blind, now I see. This man must be from God. So what happens? They expel him from the synagogue. And Jesus, 
finding out that he was expelled, goes to him and, and says, Do you believe in the Son of Man? This was a title Jesus used about himself throughout the Gospels. We can see that, the Son of Man. Do you believe in the Son of Man? In St. Augustine, he explains Christ Jesus, the Son of God, is God and man. God before all worlds, man in our world. But since he is the only Son of God, by nature and not by grace, he became also the Son of Man, that he might be full of grace as well. The blind mind answered, Who is he, who is the Son of Man, that I may believe in him? When Jesus said to him, You have seen him, the one speaking with you is he. He said, I do believe, Lord, and he worshipped him. Now this man had sight in his eyes, he was healed, but now he worships the Lord, he believes in Christ. Now just a prophet now, the Son of Man, this title that Jesus is using, that makes this man worship Christ. Now the story is complete. He has been healed physically and spiritually. Now he can truly see. So brothers and sisters, just like that man, God chose him to reveal God's glory. God has chosen each one of us that we might, that we might reveal the glory of God through our life. And that's something to rejoice, that's something to, to celebrate, that God has chosen each one of you to reveal the glory of God. Now through this video, you can worship Christ in the Eucharist. Christ will become present to us on this altar. Christ will become present and we'll have a, a short moment to to worship our Lord who comes to us in the Eucharist. So we ask Christ when he comes to us in this Eucharist, we ask him to open our eyes. We ask him during this time when we ask that question of why and what is going on, we ask Christ help us to see, help us to have the eyes of faith to see truly, to not despair, but to have the light, the light of peace, the light of trust and hope and generosity and every virtue that Christ may allow us to give in this way the glory to God. Amen. Now let us offer our prayers and intentions to our loving God. We pray for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, and for all of our bishops in, in this country and in all of their countries, especially suffering with this disease of COVID-19. We pray that God may give them wisdom as they give us instruction as they teach us and point the way to Christ. For them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our civil leaders as well. We pray for continued collaboration among countries, among the state sector, but also the private sector and nonprofits and everyone who can in big ways and small ways that we may be good neighbors to one another. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the needs of our parishioners here at St. Patrick's. We pray that no one may go with needs, that no one feels isolated, but that we may 
care for each other and look out for one another. For this, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the needs here in our parish that we may continue to be blessed with gifts of all kinds, time, talent, and treasure, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for I pray especially for my family in thanksgiving for Josefa Isabel Durango, my aunt in thanksgiving for her healing. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And in thanksgiving for my uncle, Father Nelson Medina, he is a Dominican priest celebrating today his anniversary of priesthood. In thanksgiving for him, and may God continue to anoint him. May the Spirit of God rush upon him as that Spirit rushed upon David. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for those who are sick, those who are sick among our parishioners and our family and friends, especially Mario Guzman, John Nelson, Mayela Sosa, Jesus Perez, Dorothy and Catherine Swords, Georgine Nagam, and for my dear sister, Kiona Medina, who is sick for her healing and for the healing of all of these people and all of our parishioners, relatives and friends, for them we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the repose of the soul of Most Reverend Gilbert E. Chavez, retired auxiliary bishop of San Diego, for the repose of the soul of James Eugene Byland, and Father Jose Villegas always say, and for Mary and Vincent and Thomas Sullivan, for them we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, look upon us with compassion. Look upon us with love as you looked upon that man who was blind from birth and you had compassion on him. We pray for all of these needs, all of these people. Loving God, especially for all of the people suffering from this COVID-19 for all of the doctors, nurses who are so generously and courageously just serving the, the needs of the sick for their strength. And we pray for those who are also tirelessly working for a vaccine. For everyone who's involved during this time, who is working harder to keep our society going for strength for all of them we pray to the lord lord hear our prayer loving god extend your healing hand upon everyone who is sick especially for those who are sick with this illness those who may feel isolated for all of them, loving God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, you are the light. Grant us your light. We pray to the Father, through you who reign with him in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Now we are going to offer the bread that we receive. Loving God, God of all creation, blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness 
we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We place before you with joy these offerings which bring eternal remedy, O Lord, praying that we may both faithfully revere them and present them to you as is fitting for the salvation of all the world. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. By the mystery of the Incarnation, he has led the human race that walked in darkness into the radiance of the faith, and has brought those born in slavery to ancient sin through the waters of regeneration to make them your adopted children. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration, and we, with all the host of angels, cry out, and without end, acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed, O Lord, you are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, make graciously make holy these gifts we have brought for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving his holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one Spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, Robert, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, to whom you bestow on the world all that is good. With him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. The Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, to live and reign forever and ever. 
Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. We offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with all of you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Lord, I am not worthy to have you come under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. O God, who enlighten everyone who comes into this world, illuminate our hearts, we pray, with the splendor of your grace, that we may always ponder what is worthy and pleasing to your majesty, and love you in all sincerity, through Christ our Lord. We have some announcements, like we usually do. The church will be open. Well, if you are watching this, then you are watching it on Sunday. God willing, I get to upload it soon tonight, and you get to see it tomorrow. So tomorrow, or for you already today, Sunday, church will be open. But as you know, our governor has asked that we stay home. Um, so, if you can stay home, it's better if you stay home. But we had said that we would open the church before. 
so that's why we'll still keep the church open tomorrow or today or Sunday Sunday whenever it is that if you're watching this on Sunday March 22nd church will be opened from 7 a.m. to 2 p.m. Our preschool might reopen depending on whether it's allowed by the government the county is working with preschools because healthcare uh, professionals who are working need someone to care for their children and so our preschool might open but I'll have a meeting on Monday and see if, if that is the case we'll, we'll let you know um, on the website beginning last week we have cancelled all types of events classes public liturgies please check our website it is stpatrickschurchsd.weconnect.com that's saint s t patrick's patrick then s church s d s san diego dot we connect dot com saint patrick's church s d dot we connect dot com i i will put it in the description you know I, it is my first time this is what people do on youtube videos so i, I will link it to the <laughs> description my first time saying that uh, you can find I, I um, wrote something with a lot of resources um, that you can read what I wrote and there's I put a lot of links there helpful I hope um, we need your continued support through prayer for all of our parishioners who may be going through difficult times losing a job or going through anxiety and we need your financial contributions. We still have our staff working. They have been reduced in hours, but they're still working. And we need your financial support so that I, so that we can continue to have them working. Please consider making online donations or by postal mail. Um, also, you can contact your representatives as soon as you can if you are willing to write to them about this bill called the CARES Act Bill. It's regarding giving small businesses a loan so that they do not lay off employees, but as it is, it does not include non-profits like churches, so you can contact your representatives here in our zip code area is Susan Davis and Juan Vargas. And please be a good neighbor to those around you. Please reach out by phone. You can call those who may need help, especially the elderly. You can still keep your distance, but check on them. Just check on each other, let us do that. Continue to maintain what we are told, social distancing, not moving, staying home if you can. And remember in your prayers, those who are ill, those who care for, those who are sick, those who have died, and those working for a cure or a vaccination. So these are our announcements for today. Here's a, a final prayer over you, over the people. We pray, look upon those who call to you, O Lord, and sustain the weak. Give life by your unfading light to those who walk in the shadow of death. Bring those rescued by your mercy from every evil to reach the highest good through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, 
the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. We go in the peace of Christ to serve, to love God and serve our neighbor. Amen. Thanks be to God.